Buddy, we will be starting shortly. We are waiting for a few more folks to join in. So we will get started just around 2.30. We will be starting soon. We are waiting on a few more folks. So we will begin shortly. We have a few more folks coming in now and it looks like we will be able to begin in just a minute. I wanna make sure that everybody uh, has a chance to, to log into the to the session. Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for joining in on this webinar, which will be an overview of the Connecticut DPH COVID-19 Vaccine Scheduling Navigator's Guide. Uh, a little, little housekeeping first. We, this session will basically be sort of an overview of the role of a vaccine scheduling navigator, as well as a question and answer session. If you have questions during uh, the presentation, if you would like to put those questions into the uh, questions box, I'm gonna slide my, my, I don't think you can see it, but if you can't, there is the control bar and you will see that you have the ability to see questions in that that bar you can type in your questions and we will be able to hopefully answer those for you today so my name is john levesque and joining me in 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 helping us out today is my colleague patty dunn we both work uh for osd and we are assisting dph with the vaccine rollout here in the state of connecticut so First, let me welcome you all. And this presentation, like I said, will provide you with that overview of the navigator's roles and ways in which you can help vaccine eligible recipients schedule an appointment. Thank you for all you do for supporting the Connecticut Department of Public Health and your community and volunteering for such an important, important mission here. Your work assisting recipients with the scheduling of vaccine appointments, it helps in fighting the, the COVID-19 pandemic. And we are really, really truly grateful for, for you guys and the work that you will be doing. So what is the navigator's role? The role as a COVID-19 vaccine scheduling navigator is very important. You will be helping the citizens of Connecticut by providing COVID-19 vaccination appointment scheduling information. It's very, could be very overwhelming for folks and hopefully this, this session will, will help put some uh, things at ease for you. So these are the different ways you can help. Checking a recipient's vaccine eligibility, provide vaccine scheduling information. As you um, may already know, there's various platforms for that and various ways for folks to get scheduled for uh, a vaccine. You will direct recipients to the different scheduling platforms, complete scheduling online for recipients, contacting vaccine providers or the vaccine appointment assistance line. We call that VAL. There are many ways that you are going to be able to help. Uh, you may assist them in determining if they are vaccine eligible and provide them with timely and accurate vaccine scheduling information. There are, throughout this presentation, you will see there are uh, going to be references to various websites that will help you and provide you with the tools that you'll need to, to help folks. So another important way you will be assisting recipients is to give them the information on the ways in which they can schedule a vaccine appointment, be it through a vaccine partner, such as a pharmacy or a hospital group, or through the Vaccination Administration Management System, or VAMS. You may find uh, yourself helping folks with completing online scheduling or assisting them with a call to the Vaccine Appointment Assistance Line, or the VAL. Be aware that there are needs of uh, diverse communities within Connecticut, and we wanna provide equitable access to vaccination. So this may include providing interpretation or translation services or other means to communicate 
please reach out to your volunteer organization on accessible resources and more more information on accessibility can be found at a link which I will put in the the chat section actually I have a another there's a handout in the um, handout section that has the link to to this this website but I will put that in the in the chat for you so there is uh, one platform phone assistance so if a vaccine eligible recipient requires you to initiate a phone conversation for them there are some helpful strategies to facilitate a productive and smooth transition including collecting all necessary information from a vaccine eligible recipient before initiating the call and that would could be phone number in case there's interruptions or if you got disconnected you want to make sure that you have their phone number then you will need date of birth address to locate uh, the vaccine provider we have vaccine provider searches on on our platforms and so you want to make sure that you get their address and zip code and then you want to make sure that uh, if you are calling vaccine providers directly on behalf of a vaccine eligible recipient and then transferring them to to the to the provider transfer like you're sort of facilitating the call between the recipient and the provider we call that a warm transfer outlining the scheduling procedure with the recipient informing the recipient of potential hold times reiterating that there is no guarantee you will be able to schedule with them and providing the scheduler with all necessary information up front and letting them know you'll be transferring them to a vaccine eligible recipient what makes that that helpful is making sure that you do have that information provided prior to making that call and making sure that once you do reach the the provider that you are able to give them the information they need and have a nice smooth transition remember it's it's okay not to have all the answers right away and just if you're you're honest and patient with the recipients as you work with them you know things will things will work work out it is it is a a big lift with with scheduling for these these vaccines and you know we have our 45 plus coming on friday so there are going to be lots and lots of people trying to schedule vaccine appointments so it's it's a big demand and it is all based on the availability of of the the vaccine and so there may be times that people are going to have to wait and people are going to have to you know put off being able to get vaccinated it is not it's just very complicated but things are moving in a in a fast paced direction toward getting everybody uh, a vaccine so the Connecticut COVID-19 vaccine eligibility I just touched a little bit on this this is based on recommendations from the advisory committee on immunization practices or ACIP and the governor's vaccine advisory group you can see here I am displaying a link to the vaccination phases and uh, we are now currently in an age-based vaccination phase with the exception of school teachers and our school personnel those who are work in the school systems k through 12 so we are currently getting those them vaccinated regardless of their age and the eligibility piece you know folks will need to be eligible in order to receive the vaccination and that, that eligibility right now as of right today is 55 plus or school personnel and starting Friday 45 uh, years of age or older so something else that you may find that folks are a little a little leery about is privacy and and their personal information being gathered and where is their information going privacy should be taken very seriously recipients may be very concerned about protecting their personal and health information and may be reluctant to share it with you 
If someone expresses a concern regarding this, please communicate the following to the recipient. Your personal and healthcare information will be kept private and will not be shared outside of your healthcare provider's office, the Department of Public Health, and personal identifying information such as your name, contact information, and address will be treated as confidential healthcare information and will not be shared with law enforcement or federal government without a court order or similar legal compulsion. So hopefully you guys remember all of that that I just said. But don't worry, we have that in writing for you, but you need to express to them that we we will protect their privacy in in every manner we can. And the only information that we need to gather from folks is their first, possibly their middle name, last name, gender, date of birth, ethnicity, race, home address, and a phone number. That's the only kind of information we are gathering. We are not getting social security numbers, bank account numbers, nothing of, of that nature. There is no financial information that we, we will be getting from individuals. So what this screen is showing you, this is again, a, a guide from CMS and the Office of the Inspector General, that's the federal level the Federal Bureau of Investigations and the Department of Justice. So you can see the link here. This, this is just a, a flyer to help folks to make sure that they don't fall victim of a COVID-19 vaccine scam. So they will never be asked to pay out of pocket to get the vaccine. There is no expense to the vaccine. You are, should never be asked to pay to put your name on a waiting list or a vaccine waiting list or to get early access that folks will never pay for that. There's the, no things exists. They should, folks should also be wary of advertisements for vaccines through social media platforms, email, telephone calls, online or from unsolicited unknown sources and marketers offering to ship or sell doses of the vaccine for payment that's not happening that is not a that is not a source for this vaccine the vaccine is is only administered to licensed vaccinators it is not it is not something that you can get over the internet well at least you really shouldn't take that risk because god only knows what you would be getting so uh, you do have to schedule an appointment with a vaccine clinic and, and that's how you get your, your vaccination. If you do find that, and you believe that the recipient has been a victim of a COVID-19 fraud, advise them to immediately report it, and they should report it to the Health and Human Services Office of Inspector General. And that number is, if you look at the screen right here, that number is right here, 1-800-HHS-TIPS. They, you can also report it to the FBI hotline, 1-800-CALL-FBI, and then through CMS Medicare hotline, 1-800-MEDICARE. So they really should report that they've been a, a victim of a COVID-19 vaccine scam. Report that to those federal authorities and they will be able to hopefully investigate that. Vaccine providers will never ask for a social security number or personal financial information. As a scheduler, you should never be asking somebody for a social security number or personal financial information. They have, they are not being used in the vaccination process. It is unnecessary to have anybody's social security number, and it is most definitely not necessary to have anybody's personal financial information. So you wanna make sure that that message gets out to folks that they are not giving that information out. They may be asked for their health insurance information. There is, if they provide their health, health insurance information, that is used for ancillary expenses. There are not, even if they have full health coverage, they are not obligated to provide that information, but it is uh, something that we do try to collect 
Again, there is no fee for the vaccine. There is no copay for the vaccine. It should not cost an individual one cent for that vaccination. I'm just pausing here to see if we have any questions yet. Nope. Okay, good. So let me get to the next slide here. So this is going to be your go-to place. This is going to give you all the information that you need to, to provide vaccine eligibility and scheduling an appointment for the vaccine. This, this website is, is really your go-to place. Vaccine eligible recipients may find vaccine information from a number of sources as well. However, most of them, including the CDC vaccine sites, reference or lead back to the DPH COVID-19 vaccine portal, which is what is being shown here. This is the web address for that. If a recipient refers to any source, please feel free to direct them to the DPH COVID-19 vaccine portal. You can help the recipient to verify their vaccine eligibility using this portal. It is really the, the resource that you guys will, will be finding yourselves using quite, quite often. The site includes, if you look at the screenshot of it, you can find out, am I eligible? Uh, you can check the eligibility. You can find a vaccine provider using the Connecticut COVID-19 vaccine finder tool. And uh, you can search for those, those uh, available sites near you. And there are links right in there to schedule your vaccine appointment. There are also some helpful things. There is a you know, folks are worried about vaccine and the, you know, have some, some, some of them might have some reservations about getting it. And there is some helpful information about, should I get the vaccine? There is common vaccine questions. So there's a section there on that. There's also a short video, what to expect after getting a COVID-19 vaccine. So this is a great resource, not only for you, but for the, for the recipients as well. So there are different scheduling platforms and options. There are, there are many of them. During this public health emergency, keep in mind that the vaccine supply is limited. It has definitely gotten better in the last weeks, but it is limited. Occasionally, you may encounter vaccine-eligible recipients who are very frustrated or demanding the vaccine. Now, again, it's best to be polite and try to de-escalate that situation and calmly explain that appointments are not guaranteed and that there is always a possibility you cannot schedule them. There, there may be situations where it just won't, won't happen. They might not even be, you know, categorically eligible at that point. So you're going to unfortunately sometimes have to deliver that, that difficult information to them, but just, just do your best to, to de-escalate. And, you know, as always, we're, we try to be as polite as we can. The recipients can continue to check for more appointments as the vaccine providers are adding slots and other vaccine eligible recipients are changing or canceling their appointments. That is a, something that I've commonly heard that you know, some, some folks are trying to schedule schedule or they find a, a slot that they're eligible to make their appointment and they make the appointment and then you know, a friend of theirs is like, oh, I just, I randomly got in, you know, today. So it's it's going to happen. I think it's just, it's not anything that anybody could plan for. So just realize that the the scheduling appointment times is 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 around roulette. And it, it is, a, sometimes it's a luck of the draw that you get it sooner than, than, than you thought. So we're going to go over each, each one of these three different platforms and options. So let me just go over on the next page here. So there are two scheduling options provided on the web page. Option one is to search for a vaccine site. And option two is to schedule by phone. So we want to first 
search for uh, a vaccine through that option one. And what that will do is it will provide you with all of the available vaccine appointments within that search area. So some scheduling options include vaccine providers also contacting vaccine eligible recipients to schedule. They may send them an email, they may call them, or they may text them. So there, there's folks that are being asked to schedule, and that's directly from a vaccine provider. Scheduling directly with a vaccine provider, so vaccine providers may use their own scheduling systems, and recipients can contact the provider directly for questions. So the, like an example of that would be Hartford HealthCare and that, that conglomerate. They are using their own system, so you would schedule directly with them. You can find a vaccine provider online using the Connecticut COVID Vaccine Finder, which that's essentially what this section at the top, option one is. That is, that is going to be your go-to. It really is the best place for you to search for an available appointment. Folks may be scheduling by phone. Those folks who have, you know, no technology access, they don't, they don't have the ability to access the, the web or there's, there's just difficulty for them scheduling through the online part of, of the scheduling options. We do have a, a vaccine appointment assistance line or VAL. That line really is something that is limited in terms of where somebody can get a, a vaccine. It's, it's limited to just certain sites. So it's not a, it's not a across the state, every town kind of uh, scheduling option, but it may, it may be an option for folks that need, need that assistance. So the vaccine appointment assistance line, that's 1-877-918-2224, and they will help folks who are requiring assistance and, and really want just to have that, that phone contact. There is also another option for homebound folks. And if you are assisting someone who is medically or physically homebound and would like to receive a COVID-19 vaccine in home, you need to direct them to register through the following link. That link, and I will also put this in, in the chat once I'm, I'm done presenting here. So I will make sure that you guys get that and make sure we put these uh, links in there for you. So that there is a, a link on the, I think it might be right on the site. If you see uh, homebound individuals on this uh, slide, right underneath, you'll see that blue link. That will bring you right to the form that you need to fill out and, and get the vaccine delivered to you in your home. So scheduling directly with a vaccine provider, again, they may, they may be contacting the person by email, phone, text. You may find yourself assisting someone who has already been contacted by a vaccine provider, possibly by email, text, or maybe even they received a phone call to set up an appointment. The recipient may have concerns regarding a provider that has reached out directly to them, worried that it may be a scam. There is, this is where you can lead them and, and get them to, to know if that, that was potentially an issue for them, especially if they, they tell you that they were contacted directly and asked for their bank account information or a social security number. You know that that is not a qualified vaccinator trying to set up an appointment for somebody. And just remember that no one should ever be asked for out-of-pocket payments or for payment to be put on a waiting list. And that, that is just not, not supposed to happen. And if that is happening and you're, you're working with somebody, just make sure that you have them report that to, the, to those agencies that I had pointed out earlier. 
if a vaccine eligible recipient knows their primary care provider is a vaccine provider, they may schedule directly with them. The primary care provider may direct vaccine eligible recipients to their own website and have them record or may direct them to the Vaccine Administration Management System or VAMS as their online scheduling tool. So there are multiple platforms out there that folks have access to. And if somebody prefers one provider over another, so they prefer to go to CVS and uh, CVS has got their own platform and their primary care may be using the VAM system as their platform, or the local health department is using the VAM system for scheduling purposes. So you, will, you may find that there are multiple, multiple ways for folks to, to schedule an appointment. And when you do that, that provider search, you will see that the provider in the search results, you will see that it will uh, tell you if they are uh, a VAMS user or if they are a their own system. So the, it's it's clearly marked on the the search results, and it will direct you to the VAMS system, which I'll talk about in a second. It'll direct you to the VAMS system if that's something that they need to schedule through that system. So the Connecticut COVID vaccine finder function, again, this is this is really your go-to place. I can't stress that enough for you. And when you click on, you enter your social, social security number, your zip code. I'm sorry about that. You enter your zip code, don't enter your social security number. Enter your zip code and hit the go button. And you will see here that you will you will get results. This is just a quick screenshot. And you could see that Farmington Valley Health District mobile clinic events, they want you to schedule in VAMS. If they had their own platform, it would say schedule appointment here, and you would click on that link. So using the Connecticut COVID vaccine finder is the best resource when assisting those recipients who are searching for an available appointment or who want to self-schedule online. You would enter that zip code provided by the recipient in the box indicated by the blue arrow there and click go. The system will provide you with a list of possible vaccine locations. You can use filters to sort through the search results. The options are proximity in miles or by network. Additionally, you can change your search by entering in an address, neighborhood, city, or zip code. So I, I tried that out and I put in West Hartford Center in terms of neighborhood and it did. It brought up vaccine providers within West Hartford Center. So it's, it's a neat functionality in there that you are really able to, to expand that search or really drive down so that it is a, a concise search for you. So that, that flexibility is great. Reported eligibility. This will display if the vaccine provider has reported to Connecticut DPH that they have availability. This information may not be current and may require you to check multiple locations. So right here on uh, the screen, if you see that green notification there, it says reported availability. And that will tell you that you know they are reporting, they have vaccine, they have availability to make an appointment. It's not always completely up to date, and but it is a good indicator that folks do have that vaccine available and have appointments available. There will be, this screenshot only shows one, one clinic. There will be a list of clinics. You can scroll through that list. And once you find a provider uh, that they wish to make an appointment with, you can just click on that visit website link and it will bring you to the provider you wish to schedule an appointment with. So please note that some vaccine sites allow phone scheduling through a direct clinic phone and that that may be an option. So just know that uh, some folks are using 
vans, some folks are using their own systems, some are just using phone systems. So, but this, this vaccine finder will be your, your best resource to find availability and schedule appointments. There is another option. This is called the Vaccine Appointment Assisted Assist Line or VAL. That is a, a second option. Vaccine eligible recipients with limited or no online access or are challenged by the process of self-scheduling online can call the VAL at 1-877-918-2224 to schedule an appointment at a participating vaccine provider across the state. So due to high volume, hold times may vary. So we know that the eligibility is expanding on Friday. So I bet you there'll be a whole, whole lot of folks waiting Friday on the phone. So they, folks need to be patient because there's everybody is is trying to accomplish the same thing and you know there there may be a long a long period of, of hold those who need language assistance as well as deaf or hard of hearing can access the valve by dialing 711 some vaccine eligible recipients will be directed to call the valve from their listing of their chosen provider on the Connecticut COVID vaccine finder website. So some, some vaccinators may direct you right to this, this phone number to schedule those appointments. The VAL is available seven days a week for scheduling and they are available from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. So VAMS, VAMS is the electronic web-based system that is used to schedule appointments. Some vaccine providers are using VAMS and for their online scheduling for the vaccine appointments. If you are directed by a provider or the Connecticut COVID vaccine finder search, they will need to go to the DPH VAMS webpage to register. And once registered, they will schedule their appointment at the provider through VAMS. So, this will be available, it's in again, that the, the main facing COVID-19 vaccination website it has links to all of these, these different websites as well as to this form to fill out. So this is something that you will currently right now, that's the, the process that, that may be changing in the coming weeks, but that is right now the process where you fill out the form to get yourself registered into VAMS. They don't need to register in VAMS to receive the vaccine. It is just one of the options. So if somebody does not want to register in VAMS, they, they don't have to. So by filling out the form though, if they decide, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll register in VAMS. Filling out the form, what, what that means is you are indicating to the Department of Public Health, the Connecticut Department of Public Health, that you would like to create a VAMS account. And based on your when you become eligible, the Connecticut DPH will send you an email and you will complete your VAMS registration and schedule your appointment all through the VAMS system. So if you look at the, the screen, it is uh, a two-part type process. You are filling out the form, you will receive an email from DPH once they have loaded you into the VAM system. You will receive the email confirmation from uh, DPH that they have done that. You will then receive an email from the CDC that links you to the VAMS system where you would then create an account and reg complete your registration and book your appointment. So it is a, a two-step process for that. The information that is collected in VAMS, they're going to collect your full name, the date of birth, the eligible group. So uh, there is a drop down that says this is these are the folks who are eligible at that point. They will collect the zip code and email address. The information you enter will only be used for the purposes of scheduling a vaccine and will be kept private. So the Email address is not required. It does help, it helps with communications. 
if somebody does not have an email address, it is not a requirement that they put that in there. Let's see. You may find that you're assisting folks who don't have transportation to get to a vaccinator. And vaccine eligible recipients may need that assistance to get to those appointments. But we, we don't want transportation to be a barrier to getting vaccinated. So if someone needs transportation access, the resources listed here are, are very helpful to, to get them transportation. The subsidized transportation resources exists across the state for qualified individuals. Providers and local community services may have, have been able to meet the transportation needs of their community effectively. These resources will continue to expand availability as grants and other reimbursements are obtained to support vaccination. So this transportation piece is still kind of a work in progress. So there are there are, they are constantly adding to the to the ability to get tr uh, transportation. So the 211 transportation resource is is really where you're going to want to refer folks to. And that link you could see right here is in on the on the bottom of the the screen here. Clicking on the links on the website on this website, you can it, it will direct you to a map in which you can filter the search results by zip code and view locations on map. Click get directions and button in the search to get the results for driving, walking, public transportation. They might have the, the, the information for that. And they are, like I said, adding to this as, as some expansion comes, comes along. It's a fast moving thing. So you wanna make sure that you're checking back here if you have somebody who is having difficulty with transportation. Another option for transportation is CT rides. They have a dedicated toll-free COVID-19 phone number. So that is 866-766-5516. Connecticut Rides will be available uh, on that phone number. They will be available Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. And they can assist Connecticut residents who already have scheduled vaccination appointments by providing information and referral to transportation resources across the state. So that's a, a nice resource for folks. So we are coming to a conclusion here. We are now gonna be able to open it up for uh, questions and answers. But before we do that, one thing I wanna do is uh, share with you, I put together a quick reference guide that provides the links to the different uh, websites. And I will, uh, that. I will be, no, I put that in, I'm sorry, in the handouts. I wanted to make sure I put that in the handouts. Yes, I put this quick navigator, uh, quick reference guide for navigators in the uh, handouts. So you will see this, there's two on one page. So it's something that you can keep in your pocket and it's just a quick quick resource for you. So it, it is available in the, the handouts. So let's see, I'm gonna open it up to questions. I don't know if anybody has any questions at this point. If you do, if you could type them into the questions key, or if you don't have that option, if you see chat, you can put them in there. And I see that Patty has entered some, some of those websites in there. Thank you so much, Patty, appreciate that. So in the um, chat section, you will see the sites that I had referred to. So I'm not seeing any questions. All right. Well, if we don't have any questions, I can keep this open or we will, we can end the session now and let you guys get some time back in your day. And again, we thank you. We thank you for all that you're doing in, in helping and volunteering and in all the ways that you are in, in helping the folks in Connecticut get their, their vaccination. 
and I just want to make sure before I let everybody go that we don't have any questions. Oh, we might see one. Beth. Oh, Beth. Hi. Yeah, there was one question about a form having the social security number on it. So I just responded that the that each clinic could have their own forms for people to fill out, but social security number should not be a required data field that you should be given. Excellent. So if I think what are you saying, Beth, like if you go to your primary care physician and they are asking you for your social security number, you know that that's a trusted source, but it's not required. It, yes. They may ask for it, right. but it's not required. Right. And if you're comfortable that that's It is your, not required. Uh, to, yeah. Okay, perfect. Thank you right. so it's much. It's not required to get a vaccination. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, so there is a question in here. And it said, did you mention that the vaccine can be mailed to someone's home? And that is not, not, that is not something that is, is available. They can receive the vaccination in their home if they are homebound. That vaccination will be provided by a, a medical practitioner. It could be a nurse, whoever is qualified to immunize somebody. That's the person would be coming to that individual's home and and vaccinating them. So it's not something, you know, they won't they won't mail the vaccine. They will actually have a healthcare person, the healthcare professional will come right to your home and they will deliver that that vaccine. So hopefully that answered that question. For some reason I can't see too many questions. Okay. Let's see if there's any more. John, this is Jeremy. Alvin has oh, a comment to share um, okay. relating to 711 and phone calls for the deaf community. Hi, this is Alvin. I just wanted to share with you guys relating with 711 and phone calls with the deaf community. 711, for most deaf people within the community, we they use TTY for that 711. So it, it's a different number that they would have to call. Or if they call through a video phone, the video phone will connect to a video interpreter and the video interpreter will make the phone call to 711. And then they can get scheduled that way. So I just wanted to let everyone know that there's additional resources for the deaf community. Does Alvin have a a, a website or a phone number or uh, some way that we can we can connect folks just so that I can I can update this with that that resource. How would I how would I communicate that to to folks? You don't uh, you wouldn't have to because when the deaf people make a call, they'll have all of that themselves. So through the video phone, it's through an interpreter and you'll see it. And if not, they have the TTY and it has what they need to connect to the person and whoever they get, whether it be through TTY or the video phone, it will connect them properly to the scheduling as a uh, first come first serve basis sort of deal. Excellent, all right, thank you very much, Alvin. All right, let's. Of course, no problem. Zilka has. I don't know if I'm seeing the whole question here, though. It says, I tried and called Bam, said available, but when you tried to schedule, it said not available. And that's going to happen. Yeah, that's. It's. It's. That is going to happen. And I see that Beth answered it and. You know, there is a glitch currently where the system shows no availability. However, there are appointments. Clinics are also based on first dose and second dose. So it may be, you know, it may be that the vaccine is available only for second dose folks. And so it might show that it's available, but it might only be really available to second dose folks. So it is, it is a complicated, complicated kind of system but it is again something that you probably want to just keep checking every day for that availability 
And that was great advice. Thank you, Beth. Beth is also from DPH, so she's she is a, a, a mega resource, and I tap into her quite often. So I'm not sure if there's more questions. We will keep this open for questions. So Alvin looks like he might have a, a question again or a comment. Daisy has her hand up as well. Daisy does. I can't see this stuff. Where's Daisy? You can't. No, I'm not seeing that. Mm -hmm. Your organizer and presenter. Are you on the attendees tab? Did you click on the I attendees am. tab? I am on attendees tab. Isn't that something? All right, Daisy. Daisy has her hand up. Oh, she's had it up for 37 minutes. I'm so sorry, Daisy. I could see I could see that now. It is a very small little icon there. She took it down. Yeah. Well, if you have a question, Daisy, you are more than welcome to to type it into the questions uh, box and ask that question. If that was just you happen to click on that raise hand, that's OK. Alvin did have a question or a comment. OK. It's a question regarding to transportation. So. I understand there's uh, resources for deaf blind people to get transportation, but how does the transportation work for this? Are they seated separately with PPE? Uh, because typically a deaf blind person will have a sighted support provider with them that helps guide them through places. So it would be two people riding. I'm just curious how the transportation is set up. Like, is it a car? Is it a transportation van? And how it would work for this type of situation? Oh, uh, excellent question. Excellent question. Unfortunately, I do not have an answer to that question. I have I have not been part of of that that discussion, so I don't know if any other organizer on here, if you have that information or have any idea about any of that, if you want to jump in, by all means, please jump in. I would say at this point, when scheduling with transportation for transportation that they, they should ask those questions those are good questions to ask because you're not going to want to be in with with you know social distancing you, you don't want to put yourself into a, a situation where you're going to be with more than your guide and and the driver you don't want to be having a lot of people not able to social distance, but I would my suggestion at this point is that is something that the person would need to to ask for and about when they are scheduling that 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 ride to get the vaccine. OK, thank you very much. So. Do we have is anybody's hand up? I, can, I don't see anybody's hand up. I'm not seeing any more questions. We had a we had a, f a few good questions, so I'm going to I'm just going to review those questions uh, with you and then Again, if you have a question that you'd like to ask that you you can go ahead and put that in the questions box. But let me read a few of these questions that were answered outside of, of us talking about it. So when I went to get my vaccine in the form they handed to me, it was asking for social security number. I think we we just talked about that one. So Beth, you already talked about that. And the vaccine. No, it looks like we covered all the questions, except for Andrea. Can we get back to them on this question? So on the transportation question, I am assuming you're referring to Andrea. Perfect, yes. We can get back to everybody. We have your your email addresses and, and we can get back to you with may, maybe some more details on the transportation piece of that and how how that's getting set up. So we will do that for you guys. And just we'll have to do a little research and, and get some some answers for you on that. So if there are no more questions, we can close this this webinar. You all have stepped up and are doing some some great things for the the, the residents here in the state and 
and really helping everyone to to fight this 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 pandemic. It is unlike anything I think any of us have ever been through. So we appreciate your your time, your uh, dedication, and your your willingness to to help folks navigate their way through this scheduling of vaccination. So thank you all. And I wish you the best this afternoon. And again, thank you for all that you are doing. Thank you. Did Alvin have any more any more questions? Are you all set? We're all good? All right. We're good. All set. Thank you. Excellent. I am so glad this worked out. This was quite a challenge. <laughs> when it really wasn't. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye now.